Hi everyone, my name is Jill Fisk. I'm a research associate at Kentucky State University. I work under Dr. Andrew Ray. And today we're going to give you guys a tour of our water quality lab so you have an idea of kind of what we do here, the equipment we use, some other safety protocols that we follow. And so um, one of the things being a university, we follow OSHA guidelines for safety. So anybody that works in our lab, mandatory safety equipment includes safety goggles or glasses, uh, lab coats at a bare minimum, uh, long pants, closed toed shoes, and we do also have N95 masks when we're dealing with chemical reagents just to limit the risk of exposure to your lungs because a lot of things we use are in packets and they can aspirate out as you open them. So um, all of our lab coats are easily accessible to students and staff. We have a variety of sizes. Um, we do keep um, goggles, face masks, um, everybody tends to have, you know, they keep theirs in a bag, so we have individual uh, safety equipment. And um, we do have an eye wash station here in case there are any chemical spills or you get anything in your face. Uh, there is a shower uh, two doors down, which is also part of OSHA regulations. Uh, we do have a fire extinguisher and we keep our chemical hygiene plan and material safety data sheets readily accessible and posted for any inspections or if anybody needs to know what kind of chemicals are in the reagents that they're using. Uh, we also have particular waste streams set up for each of our water quality tests and we have a chemical hood over here where all of our waste is stored and so we have two different, two different types of waste that we generate here. Uh, one is hazardous waste, which has to remain under a ventilated hood 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, each waste is particular to a given test. And um, any hazard signs um, will be stickered on here. We also have non-hazardous waste that does not have to be stored in a chemical hood because it's not going to volatize. So you can see uh, one has a green label, non-hazardous, the other one is clearly labor, labeled hazardous. It has our Kentucky State University disposal number on it and we have a safety team in place as these fill up, they'll replace them. We have, you know, centralized areas for waste pickup. Uh, that is downstream from our particular lab. So when we're when we decide on a test that we want to run, we contact our safety team. We get approval of the waste stream that the university can deal with that, and then we order the product, and they'll give us an approved container for for the test that we want to run. And so it's really important. You know, sometimes we'll have a couple of different um, ammonia tests, for example, and so you have to be very um, you have to pay very close attention to what waste container your waste is going into. You don't want to mix those waste. You have no idea what kind of chemical reaction is going to happen with that. So when we're running water quality, um, you know, we'll, we'll open all of our reagents under the hood. That prevents, um, you know, it doesn't prevent, but it limits the exposure of the chemicals, you know, into your face, your lungs, because the hood will draw away any chemicals as we're opening packets. And so it's just a good practice that uh, we've developed in our lab just to keep our students and staff safe from long-term exposure. And so at the end of every day when we're finished with our lab, we just close this door. This thing runs 24 hours a day. Okay, so we'll go through a little bit of some of the equipment that we use. Uh, we'll start uh, maybe over here and go around. Uh, one more tip on safety. We do have chemical storage that is specific to the chemical. For example, we have one cabinet that is only for acids. Anything that's acidic goes in here. These are OSHA approved. Uh, there's a lot of different types and sizes that you can cater to your particular situation. So we have one for acids. We have one over here for bases. And then flammables require their own cabinet and so we have a flammable cabinet that is metal and anything flammable such as acetone, ethanol, things like that go in there. 
So um, we'll go down with our equipment. We have, uh, this is a drying oven. And so we do have a thermometer on the top so we can monitor temperatures when we're harvesting or stocking trials. We'll take samples, we will oven dry those, and then we'll grind them up and send them off for mineral analyses. So you can set the temperature, some are digital. This is a little bit of an older model, um, but we use this for every trial. This is a muffle furnace, and a muffle furnace um, is designed to burn off everything but carbon from a sample, and so it is off now. We operate this at 550 degrees centigrade. That's pretty close to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so we do have uh, special gloves that will protect your skin up to 1,500 degrees, and, you know, long tongs and things that we can handle. So, um, so this is ceramic lined to hold that heat well. Uh, we use this in some of our solids testings. This is our spectrophotometer that we use to read all of our water quality. This is a Hawk DR6000. There are lots of different versions of this. Um, we have two different carousels that we can use if you want to get a shot inside. Um, so the carousels hold the samples and it depends on how many samples you're running and what test you're doing, which of these devices you will use. But the spectrophotometer works using light, and so it'll shoot a light at a certain nanometer to read a given test. Many of our tests are color indicative. Um, some of them are not, but many are. And so this comes with a package of hardware that downloads a ton of different water quality tests, and then we have uh, there's a favorites program on here where we save all of the water quality tests that we use in our lab. And so there is a little bit of programming on here when you start the test and set it up. We're not going to go through that today, but if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to share some of that information with you. Uh, this is our mega centrifuge uh, when we are, let's open this guy up. Okay, so open up our centrifuge. You can see it's like a giant washing machine. Uh, the rotor in the middle is catered to our specific needs. So we have the capacity to filter upwards of 500 milliliters of any type of liquid. Um, and so this is one of the vessels in there. When you're using a centrifuge, um, it is important to keep everything balanced. Um, you know, just like your washing machine, so it doesn't run out of balance. If this, if this is out of balance, it's going to automatically shut off. But we do have a variety of sizes. We can centrifuge 250 milliliters, 500 milliliters, and then we also have um, some racks that we can, <clears throat> that we can run test tubes in so we can run 50 milliliter samples or fit we have another smaller one for 15 milliliter samples um, and so it's a pretty good um, so we have a good variety of, of sizes and things that we can run and so when we are testing for bioflock and solids in the water column this helps us to centrifuge those solids out and and uh, the pellet will be at the bottom and then we can dry that and test it for you know mineral analyses or isotope analyses. So uh, that is our centrifuge. You can adjust the speed to a particular RPM, a particular time. Uh, there are water quality methods out there. You can play around with it to see what works best in your particular situation, but you set it up with the uh, RPM in minutes and you just hit start and walk away. Uh, the next thing in our line is our water filtration, and this is called a millipore, and we have two vacuum pumps hooked up to these, and so the millipore has, in the bottom of it, we have two O-rings outside, inside, that help create a seal. This particular millipore holds 15 milliliter centrifuge tubes, and from there, you, this has the capacity to filter 12 samples at a time and so you would set your tubes in and then set this on top and then we have we have fiberglass filters again this depends on 
what you are filtering, the pore size that you need, or the, you know, the solids you need to capture, what you need to filter out. So every sample gets a filter, and then, <clears throat> and then it simply goes together. And we have a wing nut here that screws down. Um, and then you just add your sample water to each well, obviously keeping track of what sample is what. And then you'll turn the pump on. I'll do this for a minute. It's going to be a little noisy. It's not too bad. Uh, it'll draw the water through and collect it in your centrifuge tube. And then we filter all of our samples just to be consistent. Oftentimes we're running bioflock systems or maybe systems in high tunnels that have algae in them. And we need the solids out of that in order to run our water quality because the solids will interfere with the readings. Okay. So... Um, this is where all of the magic happens. We run all of our water quality here. Uh, we have a variety of pipettes that we use, and um, a pipette is designed to draw liquid at a given at um, at a given volume. And so we have what are called adjustable pipettes, where we can go from one to ten milliliters, and it'll have a reading here of what we have programmed this and or set it at and so you can adjust it to whatever volume you need and then it's simply a plunger action and so it has two stops to it so we use this uh, to prepare our samples to run water quality tests oftentimes each well so each test is going to have um, a range that it'll read at and so oftentimes we'll have to dilute our samples and we need to make sure that we have an accurate dilution uh, so our reading is reliable, right? Uh, we also ordered some new pipettes here. We're going to be doing some micro centrifuging. And so these are very small amounts where we can set up 96 well plates. We have a variety of pipette tips that are universal tips that fit on, you know, each of the pipettes. And... Um, the other thing we have over here, we have a vortex, and so a vortex can be used, this one, some of them are, this one is on or off, and so literally it's going to just shake a sample for you. And there's many different varieties of this. Um, we have a stir plate where we have a saturated solution. This is particularly magnesium citrate, and so this will keep it in suspension. Um, and, and this is just a dial. So there's a magnet on the inside of this and, a, and it allows it to stir a liquid that's in there. Um, we have a variety of glassware uh, that we use for different water quality tests. Um, I'm not gonna go through all this, but again, if anybody needs help, feel free to reach out. Um, we do our process for washing dishes and cleaning glassware is pretty important. Uh, we do use lab grade uh, dish soap, which is non-sudsy, but still has phosphates in it. And so we will wash our dishes. In our particular instance, we deal with a lot of uh, microbial populations. And so our glassware gets cleaned with a 10% hydrochloric acid solution. And then we follow that with a distilled rinse. Um, anything on the right is clean. It's just kind of how we, how we do things. We do keep a dehumidifier in our lab just because we're running a lot of water quality, so we want to keep that water out of the atmosphere as much as possible. Um, we do have, we use a lot of scales for weighing samples. I have one powered up over here. Each scale um, has a range at which it will read, and so each scale has a zero or a tear button. So. If you're weighing feed, you don't want to weigh your boat. That impacts uh, your, the feed that you're feeding your animals. Um, so the other thing that we have, we use quite often when we're doing solids, is an analytical balance. And so this analytical balance will um, weigh down to 10,000th of a gram. Um, it is motion activated to open the doors. And then you can set your sample on the plate, close the door, and it will give you a weight of 16.02 grams. 
Um, our newest piece of equipment that we have is this Dynex DS2. Uh, we have training set up for this, but this is going to allow us to run um, ELISA kits, which could test for a variety of stress hormones and other compounds in blood serum. And so this is going to be an automated system that will do the pipetting and the rinsing and the protocols for us. It has its own computer and software um, that you can program a specific uh, test in, or it has a huge range of tests that you can just load. Okay, so we do have a variety of things in our lab that we use to test water quality, and uh, some of these are portable, so any farmer can take them down to their tanks or ponds and run water quality in place. Uh, this is a spin touch. This has a disc that comes with it that has the capacity to test a number of things from pH, alkalinity, um, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, phosphate, and it is very quick. It takes about three minutes um, and a very small volume of sample water. Uh, there is a salt water kit, a fresh water kit, and I believe they're developing or have developed a brackish water kit as well. So this is kind of useful. Uh, one thing that we have found for our systems, this we have the salt water kits um, and our brackish water system, some of the ranges of our values don't suit uh, what the, the equipment will read. And so then we find if we dilute our sample, it has to be the same dilution for the entire sample, all of the tests. So that's a little bit of a challenge, but you can definitely work around that. Um, and if you get a kit that's catered to your particular water type, uh, it's a pretty interesting little piece of equipment. Um, Hawk also makes a variety of fish farming uh, kits. This one is for fresh water. Um, and they have several different options. Uh, for this one, we, we keep our alkalinity in here, but there's a lot of different tests that come in this kit. This particular kit doesn't have all of those, uh, but we have, it has storage, it has reagents in here, it'll give you deionized water, little towels, everything you need to take it like a tackle box and walk around and run your water quality. Uh, the, the other thing we do is we measure water quality parameters. Uh, sometimes twice a day, sometimes once a week, depending on what the parameter is. And there's a variety of equipment that you can use for that. For our daily parameters, we use a YSI. This is a Professional Plus or Pro Plus. And this we measure uh, temperature, salinity, conductivity, pH, dissolved oxygen. And so this gets calibrated once a month. Um, the probe has... <coughs> three different probes on it. This is our dissolved oxygen probe and our pH probe and temperature and conductivity. And so we keep this at 100% humidity. There's always just a tiny amount of distilled water in here. Uh, we replace probes maybe once or twice a year depending on usage and the situation. Um, you know, are you in salt water, fresh water? You know, everybody's situation is a little bit different, but probes don't last forever. Check your probe life if things are not accurate. Uh, there's a reason for that. But you can calibrate this equipment. It is very reliable. It's very precise. Uh, there are simpler methods to do this. Uh, one of the other things that we have and we keep on hand are portable pens. So this measures pH. So you can, you can get an expensive piece of equipment or you can get something that is very cost effective that you can just drop in a sample and it'll read within seconds or a minute. And so lots of different brands, lots of different types. You can do DO meters only or pH meters or a combination. This is a multi-parameter um, piece of equipment that measures more than one parameter. This is only going to measure pH. Uh, the other thing we use on a re regular basis is called a turbidimeter. And so the turbidimeter uh, comes with a variety of standards. And turbidity is uh, the ability of light to penetrate a water column. 
So we have a variety of sample vials. You're simply going to collect your water, um, collect our water sample, and we take the cloth, clean off any fingerprints, because this again reads by light, and you would simply put it in and hit read, and then it'll tell you uh, the turbidity of your sample. So we do check this um, at least on a weekly basis when we're running, running trials, uh, because we monitor our turbidity levels because we're growing microbes and bioflock. So we want a certain amount of solids, but not too much. Um, one of the other things for safety, anytime we're working with any chemicals, um, we have a variety of disposable gloves, nitrile gloves of various sizes. This is critical safety component of our water quality lab, and we go through quite a lot of these.